And Tarot Hostile, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kyle Laris, and today we're going to be looking at the third match in the best of three between ATN Sake and Insolence. If you haven't seen the other matches, um, I, I wasn't going to spoil the outcome of them, but it's pretty obvious if we're in the third match of a best of three. One, one, one. One, one, one. One of the players won one of the games. Uh, yeah, that would be better. One, one, one. And, um,. The other, one and the other. So, yes. And I'm still mesmerized by the fact that Insolence has this little portrait. Do you get that from getting the Colossi thing? I'm not sure. But I love that. That's fantastic. I need to do that at some point. But I never get time to ladder. Anyway, yes. This is between Sokke and Insolence, as I said previously. And both of them choosing very n similar colors. I, I wish they wouldn't. Pink is my favorite. I like the pink. Oh, no, 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 actually, I don't. Pink is not my favorite. The dark, dark gray, which is pretty much black, is my favorite. But you can only use that when you've got, like, 16 players in a game or whatever, so... Ooh, excuse me. It's not exactly <coughs> uh, easily usable. Anyway, you don't get to use it too often. Only in custom games. Anyway, what do you see now? A gateway going down... Force, okay. Uh, and I apologise if you don't actually like PvP games that much because they're not exactly that diverse. Um, I remember when I did cast that Best of Seven series, and if you haven't seen that Best of Seven series from the uh, Double and Double Elimination final, uh, that was ridiculously diverse. Those players really kind of wanted to put on a show, and it was it was really good. So if you haven't seen that, and you 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 think that PvP isn't diverse, go and watch those that series because everything about those games was just ridiculous and diverse and insane and Nintel. So both players at this point in time going for pretty similar builds as you can not deviate from much unless you were going for kind of a proxy down here or anything like that. <coughs> so yeah we do see a seven minutes call coming out for both players at this point and at this point uh, Insolence is a little bit ahead. We do uh, In the previous games we did see that Sokka was a little bit ahead uh, on his build or whatever but it's just again I think it's personal preference on when you actually want to put those down. Um, uh, coming into this very beginning of a game. We do see Chrono Boost now going down on the nexus of Sokes as well as uh, Insolence is actually saving his Chrono Boost currently so uh, very very small minute details here but we should look at all these in order to make sure that we understand why they are doing it. That's what my channel is about, information and it's all good. Anyway, Insolence here throwing down this uh, pylon to make sure that he can get as much coverage of, the base, of his base as possible. Very very good to uh, cover as much of your base as possible to make sure you can see if anything's going on in the corners um, because people people can do tricky things, tricky, tricky things. Uh, Sake bringing his pro back and that's going somewhere other than his base. Where are you going? Where are you going? Sake, you're just so tricky with your pylons. I'm pretty sure he's going to be throwing down a pylon here. You've got to be doing because that's a nice place to, just uh, for people um, that don't know this or whatever, th this is a nice place to put a pylon down because when your opponent actually scouts your base, they always take this kind of path, kind of, they, they never actually scoot past here. So I imagine he's going to be throwing down a pylon soon. We'll come back later and have a look. Insolence capturing this tower at this point in time and throwing down more gateways. So we do see three gates currently here against four gates uh, from Sokke. So four gate push. <laughs> it's not as newbie as you think. Uh, from Sokke at this point, and he is putting this pylon in this four position. I would uh, this pi this is a good pylon position right here. I, I do also like this position here as well. Uh, although this is more prone to being scouted, since uh, this bush just makes it a bit too obvious that that pylon could be there. So now this probe is going to spot that. No, he's way too far away. It doesn't matter. This stalker coming out across the map, and I'll just be able to try and apply some early pressure and. Uh, Three gate robo coming down from insolence at this point in time against what is shaping up to be a very early four gate push by Sokke. So at this point, yeah, warping in units at this pylon here. So he needs to be able to fend off, uh, he needs to be able to really sentry that ramp, uh, force field that ramp in order to be able to hold this off. I like this pylon placement by Sokke being able, as you can see, it just clips the edge of there. So when he does get high ground, he can warp in zealots up there. I love that. I, Ever since I saw Sokke, and I think it was Kiwi Kaki in the MLG finals um, doing this, I've done it all the time. I know it's such a simple, simple concept, but it's so powerful. As you can see, he did have high ground coverage there, walking in zealots, being able to use that high ground as effectively as possible, bringing these stalkers around in order to be able to shoot up the high ground. These force fields are in a nice position. He can actually, I'm pretty sure he can get that down there. There was a little bit of a gap, but it doesn't matter too much now as the force field has dissipated. Another nice force field going down there in order to be able to cut off a lot of those units, but he's still warping in more zealots up at the top. 
trying to wail down on these forces here. These sentries getting out. One of them has two kills. That's very rare that you see sentries in with quite a few kills. And more zealots warping in at this point. Although when they're warping in, they did get double damage. And now all these sentries are going to go down. These stalkers and zealots having a nice time wailing down on these stalkers. And we do see now another gateway coming down for instance. They did cancel that robo. He needs to be able to fend this off with another four gate in order to be able to match his opponents. And now Sokke is just warping, going to be warping in more units from what I can see here. He has uh, been pushed away, but now warping in more stalkers in order to be able to combat the stalker force of insolence. And he's going to go up the ramp. He's, gonna, oh, he's not going to go up the ramp. He doesn't have a sentry. Oh, he does just have a sentry right now, catching two of those stalkers. Nicely done there. But these stalkers still in range of these zealots here, although these zealots are wailing away at these stalkers. I've said wailing about five billion times in this video, but it doesn't really matter. And now he's going to have to retreat because this force is way too strong of insolences. Warping in more units there and warping in a few zealots. But I believe that Sokke's push has been foiled at this point. It doesn't look like he's going to be able to push up this ramp any further. Um, so, because that was a really nice, <laughs> really nice defense there by insolence. Good call. Cancelling the robo bay. Throwing down that gateway in order to be able to reinforce just that extra little bit. Um, as he th realised that with the Robo Bay it wouldn't have been the best situation at all. So now Sokka's forces have been uh, thwarted and he's going to be moving back to his base. Uh, it looks like at this point Insolence is going to be mounting a counter attack. What uh, ATA and Sokka really needs to do now is get a sentry up at the top of this ramp, to force field the bottom of the ramp as quickly as he possibly can do, warping in a lot of zealots there. Um, but I'm not so sure that's the best option right now. I think he will have another round of uh, warpings to be able to do just before this army does appear. Uh, now throwing down a pylon in this forward position in order to be able to fend off as much as possible. He does notice this pylon here, so he's going to be trying to take that down as quickly as possible in order to make sure that he can't be counter-attacked whilst trying to push up this ramp. Do you see now another pylon going to be set down very soon? Yes, he's going to be setting it down just behind the middle of the line. And at this point, ATN Socket is very much on the defensive, and he has silocked him. He has been silocked due to that pylon going down now, so he needs to throw another pylon down really quickly and get a sentry out. Ah, he does have a sentry coming now. Very nice. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. In order to be able to fend off this, and that sentry is going to make it very hard for them to get up the ramp. He does see that sentry and backs off very wise of insolence there. We do see now a Robo Bay coming down for insolence as well as, oh my god, a Dark Shrine. I didn't notice this Dark Shrine. Where is his Twilight Council? There's Twilight Council there. And this Dark Shrine in this position here in order to be able to... Oh my god, that is going to do a lot of damage since currently insolence has no observers. He's going to produce, he does produce an observer, so that's going to uh, shut down that Dark Shrine <coughs> very soon. As long as he doesn't throw it over the other side of the map instantly. Now throwing up that expansion. Nice timing on that expansion there. Uh, Soki was playing very defensive um, going into that engagement. Um, and it seems like Soki is looking around. But he sees that the forces are not out here. So he's going to be able to move out safely. This pylon now down and this dark shrine is almost done. So he's going to be able to warp in a few units here. Again, I really like the proxy pylon placement here um, in order to be able to warp in units. I really need to do that proxy pylon uh, video at some point for people on every single map. Um, I've already done two of the maps, but it actually takes a lot more time than I imagined it would. I could quite easily just like draw a diagram and say, you put one here and you put one there. But um, I, I would like to do kind of like in game, that'd be pretty cool. Oh, and we do see three Dark Templar now moving into the base of Insolence, and um, they're getting stuck a little bit on this uh, troop here. I'm not sure, weird pathfinding there on these Dark Templar, but they haven't been spotted thus far. And this observer is moving across the map, um, so that's not going to be very good. And it, ah, he has spotted these Dark Templar wailing away now. Oh, I'm keep saying wailing. What's going on? Ah. Um, smashing, there we go, smashing this robotics facility into oblivion and this observer needs to get back home in order to be able to save these. He's going to be taking down the Nexus, oh no, my god, he's going to be taking down the, this Nexus with another Dark Templar here, so this Nexus race here. As you can, he can see the shadows of these Dark Templar, nice force fields in order to be able to protect it a little bit, but there are still two Dark Templar on this Nexus as well. All these units mixing it up with the probes, the probes aren't mining, oh my god, what's going on? More force fields and the observer did get back in time in order to be able to detect those. But the, at the same time, this Nexus is going to fall, oh my god, to these Dark Templar. So now these Dark Templar are going to be running away, no doubt. Try one running away whilst the other tries to take out this um, 
pile on a big force here from Insolence right now, although he needs to be able to deal with these Dark Templar, otherwise he's going to be in a really bad spot. We do see now Asake does have this expansion up as well as an Observer of his own. So he's going to be in... Uh, oh, that wasn't... Was that Sokka's? Oh my god, where is it? No, that's that's Insolence's, sorry. Um, <coughs> but now these Dark Templar are just chilling out across the map. Um thwarting any kind of push that Insolence can do at this point because if, if he doesn't move out with this uh, Observer then he's going to have a hard time um, actually kind of controlling anything that can be done in his base or against this army because he only has one Observer, well he actually has two Observers so he could keep this one with his force and then this one back in the base with a few units so mm, I'm not so sure, bad sort of decision making from Insolence there um, but it doesn't matter too much since um, these Dark Templar are a scary, scary unit to deal with. We do see now range, um, Colossus range coming out now for insolence, although he doesn't actually have any Colossus, <laughs> Colossi out. He is getting too queued up at this point. Bad queuing, to be honest. He shouldn't really queue them up. Um, although I'm, I am guilty of queuing up units as well, so. Hey, some people are queuing and guilty of these things, so it doesn't matter too much. Zealot Charge now coming out for Sokke, as well as the Templar Archives, has gone down. Nice transition into that Templar Archives. Hey, you may as well get it if um, you've already got a Twilight Council and a Dark Shrine up. Uh, and we do see now this, this unit ball moving across the map, and this Dark Templar is taking the opportunity of that and moving into the base of the opponent. And this Observer does see this Dark Templar right now, and whilst a Dark Templar is in the mix of this unit force here, moving across here, going to be trying to push on this base here. He doesn't have Psystorm yet, I don't believe, uh, but he does have Archons warping in, one take, being taken down very quickly. Nice, nice force fields there in order to be able to stop that push. It needs his observer to be able to spot that, or the observer did spot the Dark Templar and the Colossi took it on very, very quickly. Guardian Shield going up for both players now, and the so uh, Zealot Charge mashing away at those units, and this Archon getting in on the mix. I love Archons so much, they're fantastic. A lot, a lot of damage being done to these units here, uh, and Insolence's forces are being ripped apart by the Zealot Charge, but it seems like Insolence is in, in a good spot here. Um, he has Zealots uh, reinforcing that Colossus almost died, but nice Mike Bernard was able to keep it alive. And these stalkers are mashing away at the uh, zealots. So right now, ATN Sock is in a bit of trouble. He needs to be able to reinforce heavily in order to be able to fend this off. Oh, that Colossi did go down. That's a really big hit for uh, Insolence at this point. And it seems, though, that Insolence has got a massive force. And he's going to be moving into the base of Sokke. Morphing in another arc on there from Sokke. Um, but it's going to be taking double damage all this time. And Sokke does GG, so... That's the end of that, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this best of three series. Uh, if you've watched them all, if you didn't, go and watch the other two. Um, so thank you very much for coming to my channel. And uh, if you like what you see, please subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.